and bingo, we should be airing, we should be going live as the room opens in five seconds from now. And there we are. In our, we are live with solving the internet puzzle. I'm going to be spending the next hour with you folks as you stream into our uh, Google Hangout here. I'm going to be uh, spending the next hour with you talking to you about Evernote. If you're expecting to learn something other than Evernote, that's not what this webinar is about. This is all about Evernote. So i got to welcome you as you're coming. And let's take a look here and see, make sure that the room is indeed filling up. Yes, it is. There we are. We're closing in on 100 people already registered and through. So first of all, i got to thank you all for trusting me with an hour of your time today. I'm really looking forward to sharing this information with you. I've been working hard on Evernote, uh, on this content for Evernote for a couple of months now. And uh, this is the second time that I've delivered the webinar. I, I launched it this morning. Things went pretty well. One technical glitch this morning, which was awesome to have to, to make sure that we could get through it. Uh, but for the most part, things are going swimmingly. Let me tell you about the environment that we're delivering the webinar in to get things going. I'm going to be doing all of this webinar live. Those of you who have taken my webinars before know that I'm a big fan of the hybrid webinar, where I spend some time with live, and then I stream video through, and I spend time in chat. That's not going to happen this time. I'm doing the whole webinar live, which is uh, fraught with challenges because I'm trusting the technology to work as I'm actually doing things, but it also shows you the real world, how Evernote fits. So it's a little more interactive as far as that's concerned. Uh, I have uh, Luke in the chat room helping out with any administrative details. If you're having trouble, Luke will try and guide you through it. But basically, we are in a Google Hangout, and if you're having trouble, if the video and audio are out of sync or if you're booted off, just come back in. Just relaunch your browser. If you're using Internet Explorer, no guarantees. All other browsers should be fine, including actually all of the mobile browsers. They should be working fine for you. So you should be getting everything. Now, if you look in the right-hand side of your screen, there's a, a sidebar that will be able to that you can engage in chat with the with the people from all over, uh, with the other people who are attending the webinar and with Luke. And also any uh, any links that I'm going to be creating during the webinar will appear in that in that sidebar. Um, while I'm while I've got you here, let me know where you're from. I don't have time to welcome everybody here you know, <laughs> right now, but I always I read the chat and copy the chat afterwards and go through it all. And so it's fascinating for me to see where you're all coming from. So I appreciate you. Uh, I, I appreciate you uh, letting me know where you're visiting from. And I see already people from Ontario and uh, and other places. Ontario is a place. That's true. Now, uh, oh, we should we can start with a poll. I, I want to get a kind of measure the the audience a little bit, and so I have a uh, a quick poll asking me asking you what kind of Evernote user you are. If you're a raw beginner, if you've used it a bit, but are kind of a lapsed in uh, Evernote user all the way through to people who use it all the time. Just be interesting for me to know exactly what sort of an Evernote user you are. So if you can uh, click on that poll, we will get things going. Now, I'm going to be popping in and out of demo mode, screen sharing mode, as we go along uh, through, through the webinar. So I'm actually going to start that right now. I'm going to launch into it. Oh, before I do, I should do a few other administrative details. If you have trouble or if you get called away by an emergency and you end up missing the webinar or having to skip out early, two hours after the webinar closes, you'll be sent an email with a webinar link back to the replay. So you'll be able to view it all uh, at, your, at your leisure. Or if you want to review any of the content that I cover, uh, you can review it. You'll be sent an email. Actually, you can be sent three follow-up emails, one two hours after the uh, webinar, another in a couple of days, and one more in a week, just to remind you of all of the where the link is, where the replay is, and also to let you know and give you access to all of the different resources that we talk about through this webinar. If you want if you're not signed up for my newsletter, but you want future email from me on other webinars, et cetera, that I deliver, uh, then you've got to go to my website and sign up for the newsletter. Being on the list for this particular webinar, you're only going to receive a few emails directly related to this webinar. So administrative details done. Let me jump in, and I am going to start screen sharing with you right now, and I am going to talk you through what to expect today and solving the Evernote puzzle. So, present in a new window. That's what we want to do. There we go. Hey, hey, we're off. So today's agenda. I'm going to try and put together for you in the next 45 minutes or so a picture of how Evernote fits in your life and what you can do with Evernote. I'm going to try and solve the Evernote puzzle for you. I've broken it into five main areas. The first is gathering information, bringing data into Evernote. That's research. Once it's in, we need to organize it. We need to be able to recall it when we need it. 
We need to have access to our information where we are and when we are. A huge part of understanding Evernote is understanding that it that uh, is understanding the mobility component of it. The fact that we can access our data and collect our data anywhere we are. That's a big part of the puzzle. We're going to talk about integration. Everybody wants to integrate with Evernote. Every major software manufacturer out there that deals with information and productivity wants to make sure that what they do works with Evernote. So we're going to be talking about integration. And we're going to wrap things up by talking about collaboration, which is one of my favorite topics with Evernote. So what do you can expect? Live demo, real world. I'm going to be using my Evernote account. And the things that I'm doing are not canned. They're all, pack they're all, uh, they're all going to be in real time. And you're going to learn about Evernote the way that I use it every day. This webinar is not going to be going into menus and me showing you chapter and verse how do you create a new file and how do you organize the, the note and all that sort of stuff. No. I'm going to show you how I use Evernote. Why it, how it makes me far more productive than I ever expected I would be uh, at this stage in my life. I'm going to show you how I use it and then you can set Evernote against the, you can set that against the lens of your own life. You can determine what to take from how I use it and how you can implement it in your life. The thing about Evernote is there's no one correct way to use it. There's no one correct way to structure it. It's a system that you want to personalize and no two people use it the exact same. So it would be folly for me to expect you to organize your life the way that I organize my life. Instead, I'll show you the tools that I use, why I use them that way, and then you can figure out how those fit in your life. We should have some time for questions at the end. I did in the first session, so I'm planning on having some time for questions at the end. So uh, save them. Or uh, in the chat room, you can also post questions, and I know that there are people of varying levels. And some of you that are in the uh, chat room that are more experienced in Evernote, you might be willing to share the answers as well. So let's dive in, and let's take a look at Evernote. Now, I'm sharing my screen here. And what you see in front of you is my actual Evernote account. Now. Let's begin by talking about what Evernote is because I think this is a place that people uh, kind of get off the rails because trying to understand Evernote, people sometimes think, well, it's an app, but I don't, just don't get it. That's, I think, the first mistake that most people make with Evernote is it's not an app. Sure, there is an Evernote app, but you can't categorize it like you can a word pre processor like Word or Excel or Spreadsheet or any other tool. Because Evernote is really all about the content. It's all about the data that lives in Evernote. We use the apps. We use the web app. We use the desktop app. We use the apps on our smartphones. We use it to access the data. But Evernote is all about that data. And the analogy that I've come up with, I, I don't know if it's a good one, but I think it might work, is food. You think about food, we, just because you learn to cook doesn't mean you necessarily understand food or you're, you're a master of food. Food is the data. And we use the different tools like stoves, barbecues, uh, deep fryers, a refrigerator. We use all these different tools to manage our food and to help us access our food. But the food is the, is the, is the, is the, is the gold in, in what we're talking about. The data that's in Evernote is like food. And the tools we use, like a fridge, are tools like the web app and things like that. And just like food we use for sustenance, we use for entertainment, we use for edu we use for uh, pleasure. <laughs> With my parents, they actually use food as punishment occasionally, but that is my cross to bear. You've got the same capabilities with the data with Evernote. And it's the tools that we use allow us to massage the information in different ways, to access it in different ways. So looking at look at Evernote as the the data pool is this is this as your investment in collecting different assets, different digital assets that you can then, that you then own because once you've brought them into Evernote, you can recall them and you can start to use them in different and creative ways. So that, so that is my look at Evernote. What I'm going to try and turn you into by the end of today is an Evernote chef. Am I carrying the metaphor too far? Perhaps. Here is my Evernote account sitting in front of you. Another place people do get confused with Evernote is when they look at people's Evernote, when somebody shows them Evernote, it doesn't necessarily look like it looks on their system. And that's because, uh, first of all, Evernote takes advantage of every operating system it's in. So the interface looks slightly different on different interfaces. But secondly, we can customize our look, our views in Internet, a lot uh, in Evernote, excuse me, a lot. And I've customized my view. Just it's like people do their email view. Some people have the, the viewing panel in one place and other places. I've customized my view to work the way I work in Evernote. 
Down the left-hand side, are uh, this is called the sidebar. And these are shortcuts to different features within Evernote, including most of my data. Down the center is just basically a list of all of the different notes that I have in the particular notebook that I have open. And then on the right-hand side is the note itself that I can edit, I can work with, I can share, I can read. That's my viewing pane within Evernote. So that's my structure for Evernote. It's not too fancy, and it's, it's really not where I want to begin. What I want to spend too much time in today is in the app itself, although we will come back to the app regularly. But instead, I want to talk to you about how I use Evernote. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a scenario on day-to-day -day use of Evernote and how it fits in my life, and, and then you can determine whether or not it fits in your life and how as you move ahead. So let's, as a, professionally, I guess I am a content creator. What I do is I create content. Uh, usually for YouTube, I create videos and how to use different pieces of technology. So my day-to-day -day regular process spends a lot of time reading and researching and learning about different applications and different uh, techniques online, different things that people might want to learn. So I'm constantly curating, constantly collecting information that my audience might be interested in. So my day starts by doing research. So I'm right now preparing a uh, video on back-to-school apps. So this is a website I found this morning that's got some interesting apps as I was reading through, and it's got something that I want to save. This, is, this has got some information that I might want to use when I create my video, and it's specifically actually this, this little app called iHomework. Sounds interesting, but I don't spend a lot of time. I, I want to be able to just collect information by browsing right now, and then later on I'll go in and research and actually look at it and try and build a show or build a video out of this research. So how do I then take information that I find on the web like this and save it so that I can access it again in the future. Now, in the old days, there was a variety of different ways that one could do this. For example, many people would say, Steve, you can save them as bookmarks. You can save every page as a bookmark. And yes, indeed, you can. And how successful have you been in your life at finding things that you've bookmarked? I mean, other than a site you go to like every other day, which is your bank, how successful are you with bookmarks? Bookmarks are a place websites go to be lost. Bottom line is bookmarks are a poor choice of technology for the most part for doing this kind of stuff. It just doesn't work very well for us. So I, I, I say bookmarks aren't going to be the answer as far as I'm concerned. So the next thing that some more creative people might do is they say, you know what, I take the URL from here and I email it to myself. So I copy that URL and I send it to myself in an email. Isn't that a brilliant way, Steve, of, of saving information? Not so much because email is a terrible place to find things afterwards. How much time have you spent in your life searching through email to find something? I'm guessing a lot. It's not a good filing system. In fact, it is one of the worst filing systems that we can use. So sending things into your email creates email overload for you, it creates extra work, and it makes you search through the email on a regular basis with uh, often without bearing fruit. It can be a huge time vampire. I don't like people filing things in email. <coughs> you can also then, well, what about taking this URL and copying it and pasting it into a note? Start a word processing document, save it as a note. That's actually not a bad idea, but it's fairly labor intensive. Plus, you have to do other things. You have to write down what the website is because typically speaking, looking at a URL isn't going to tell you what that website is, so you've got no context. And plus, where are you going to save that document? And how many of you have multiple documents with URLs in it that when you open them up make no sense? All of these, good ideas seemingly on the surface, but in practice, bad ideas. Evernote is a good idea. Evernote is designed to do this kind of content collection. And they've created a, a tool. A few years back, they created a tool which was so beautiful when I first viewed it, I think I wept. It's called the Evernote Web Clipper. And what it does is it's a little browser add-on that you can install in any web browser. I've got it running here in Chrome, and you can see it right up here in the uh, up here in my in my menu bar. And it is a utility that plugs in and allows us to grab any information, to clip any information that we see on our screen in a browser, and save it into Evernote. And it is elegant, it is simple, and it is useful. And I use it every day. Here's how. Here's the story that I want to save on iHomework. I click on the Evernote Web Clipper. I click on it. I don't clip on it. I click on it. And a little dialog box pops up that gives me choices of how I can save this information. I can save the whole article, a simplified article, the full page. I can just save it as a bookmark, or I can save a screenshot. 
And then down beneath, once I've decided it, how I want to save it, what format I want it in, I can organize it. So it's linked to my Evernote account, so I can choose which notebook I want to save it to if I've got a notebook structure in my Evernote, and I can also select here which tags I can add to it. Now, tagging is a way for us to demark information notes, to add metadata to a note that allows us to categorize it in ways other than just saving it in a notebook or based on search. So for this sort of a, uh, a, an implementation here, because I'm going to use this sort of information in my demos, I've created a tag called demos so that if I now save this note, it'll have the tag demo. If I need to search just on demos in the future, I can bring up all of the different pieces of information I've clipped that I think are appropriate for me making my demo videos. So this is a tremendous uh, asset when I'm dry, when I'm basically suffering uh, uh, I, writer's cramp. I, if I can't come up with an idea of a story I want, I just call up all of my demo tags, and I look at all of the different links that I've captured over the last little while that inspired me enough to say this might be something that I want to do a demo on, and that's how I keep my machine moving along. Once, I've done, once you've done all of this designation of where it's going to be saved, you simply click on Save. And then a little bit of magic happens as Evernote syncs it to the, uh, to, uh, to the cloud, stores it in your Evernote account, and then brings back an option for you to start to share it if you want. One of the things we're going to be talking about a little bit later is sharing, but this is our first peek at how Evernote allows us to extend out into our network with sharing. So if I wanted to take the, the, the clip that I just created and share it into LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or Google+, I just have to click on one of those links, it launches my app in that area, and it creates a status or an update with a shortened URL in that status update that will bring people to the shared note so they can actually view this note. It's very cool. I'll be talking about it a little bit more in the second half of the webinar when I show you uh, details on how sharing works. But this is our first peek at how sharing works. Before I leave this, now this note's been saved, so we'll go look at it in, in Evernote in just a few seconds. Before I leave it, though, this I want to show you one other way that we can save information in uh, using the web clipper. And that is using the screenshot mode. So when, oh, actually, I didn't show you this. Well, let me first, oh, how did I miss this? Simplified article. Did you take a look at the article itself? It's got all this advertising filling up the screen. You don't want to save all of that, even though I just did save it. Instead, you want to save it as a simplified article. Evernote's got some very cool technology called Evernote Clearly, which will go through and strip out all of the ancillary information, strip out all the ads, and just give you the data, the details yourself. Isn't that much more elegant to save and much easier to read? That's why they called it Clearly Technology. I'm going to save that again, so I'm going to actually have two notes saved. Now I'm going to show you the other way of saving a note, which is taking a screenshot. Now, when we choose a screenshot, it brings up a crosshairs that allow us to highlight and marquee the area that we want to save and take a snapshot of it. Whoa, I clicked on something else. Sorry about that. My bad. Let me go back into that. I accidentally clicked on the little link up above there, my mouse. I, I, I was over aggressive with my mousing. Let's go back and take the screenshot one more time. There we go. That's what I want to capture. And there I've got the graphic. Now, this is a graphic that I've captured now, and, but the options that it come, I come up with before I save it are the ability to annotate it, which is very cool. So this is awesome if you're doing web design. So I can tell my designer, I want to take the price and I want to move it down into that corner. So you've got the ability to communicate graphically as we move along. Let's save that. I love doing, uh, I love doing annotation of, of, of notes and graphics. It's one of the tools that I use the most in, in, as I collaborate with others working in Evernote. Once that's all done, it's synced. So let's jump back into Evernote and make sure that I'm in my inbox. I am in my inbox. And let's just update our notes. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's all of the notes now synced through the Evernote web services to my desktop account. So now I've got access to all of that information that we just captured on in Evernote. And so it's available to me anytime. So I can start to work with it. I can just archive it. I can save it. I can recall it when I need it. I've begun the process of increasing the value of my Evernote account. Now here's one thing that you have to understand about embracing Evernote is there's a tipping point of putting content in Evernote before Evernote kind of returns the investment that you give it. 
So the whole idea is the more information we gather, the more digital assets or inventory that we put in Evernote that is valuable to us, the more valuable Evernote will be to us and the more we're going to get out of it. So it takes you a little bit of time until you've actually gathered and collected and stored enough information in Evernote to the point where you're going back in Evernote, finding things of value, and it's starting to return your investment on time. I think it probably is maybe a month to two months of, of inventory, of collecting inventory before you really start to see the benefits. But that's the commitment you have to make to yourself if you really want to embrace Evernote is to use it to collect the type of information that you're interested in collecting for a period of time until you start looking. It becomes second nature for you to look into Evernote in order to find it. It's I call it getting the Evernote habit, but basically getting to the point where Evernote has everything that you need when you need it. So that's the first bit, that's collecting information into Evernote. Now let's go on with my day. Let's walk through a day in the life of Steve. And let's say that I've done my research in the morning, but now I'm heading out on the road and I am going to go meet a client or a friend uh, for lunch or coffee or for a business meeting. And in the in the course of our conversation, I'm just going to call it my, uh, that's actually an Android screen. I'm going to start this out with the uh, iOS. In the course of our conversation, my friend mentions to me that they are, uh, their son is going back to school. And I said, wow, I saw a really cool homework app today when I was browsing my information online, when I was looking on the internet. And so that, typically speaking, what we would have said in the, had to say in the past was, when I get back to the office, let me send that to you. And then you've got this whole disconnect between the conversation, the immediacy of the information being vital, and then you getting back to the office and having to remember to send it to somebody if you do fo indeed follow up. That's yesterday's way of doing things. And frankly, that sucks. Today, way more cool. You're sitting there, you're saying, hey, your son's going back to school and they're looking for a good app to help him with homework. Hey, I was just looking at something today. Let Just a minute, let me jump into my notebooks here. And you open your Evernote account, you call up your phone, you bring up your Evernote account, and there is the note that you just created this morning or that you created a week ago or a month ago that you remember having. It doesn't matter how long ago it was and you can share it instantly. Let me send this to you here. You can read it. You've got, you now are not the person that says, let me get back to you on that. You're the person that says, I've got that for you right here. Here it is. Wait a minute. I have it here. You share instantly. This is so powerful. The ability to be able to share information and to be able to get it when you need it, where you need it. One of the cornerstones of what Evernote is all about. Now, let's continue on with our day because we not we haven't just got the, uh, sorry, we, we, we are in the meeting, we're chatting away, we've shared some really valuable information, and if it's a client, you probably impressed the heck out of the client by how connected you are, and now you've got some notes that you do have to take away. You've got some things that you're having, having a conversation with them about that you have to take back to the office. So you're going to create a text note. Evernote's a great way to collect information while you're on the road. Now you can use the camera within Evernote to capture visual information or you can create notes. The challenge with creating notes is I hate typing on these stupid little keyboards. I'm all thumbs and uh, they don't work well. However, Evernote takes advantage of the operating system level speech recognition and all of the operating systems. So I like to dictate my notes all the time. So quickly, as quickly as you can, I put together, and if you take a look down the bottom of this, this is the iPhone that I've got running here. There's a little microphone uh, icon there. That enables Siri, basically. And so let's just add some text. A really important note on the iPhone. So I'm using Siri to collect the information and the dictation. If you haven't done this, it works awesome. I am now dictating an important note into my iPhone, comma, using the voice dictation software that is built in, exclamation mark. So there it is. Let's take a look. I am now dictating the important note in my iPhone using the voice dictation software that's built in. Awesome! <laughs> I'm going to save that note. I just love doing this. You know, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I still get a kick out of this. Do you see the little wheel spinning at the top of the iPhone screen there? That's telling me that it's syncing back to Evernote. Now, earlier in the first webinar I delivered today, people were saying, okay, that's great on the iPhone, Steve. What about the rest of the world? Does it work in Android? Why, yes, it does. Let me just move my iPhone screen out of the way here. And right behind it, there is an Android phone that I have running. Now, my interface for the Android phone is slightly different because I have to use my mouse instead of uh, just because of the way that it works here. But let's start a new note in the Android phone. And I'm going to create the note. And it's going to be, if I click on the plus here, I can choose see all 
I can choose speech to text and I'm just going to do the same thing. A similar note in Android exclamation mark. I am now dictating into my Android phone using the same technology as I was on the other people's phone. Once that's done, a similar note in Android into, okay, it's not quite as perfect, but then also the phone is much farther away from my mouth because of the way I'm holding it. At any rate, once this is all done, I can save this. I should be able to sync that. And the note, I hope that I saved the note. I believe I saved the note. And if we go back now into Evernote, let me just click here to make sure that the sync has happened. Sync it there. Now I'm going to move my iPhone and Android phone to the side. Let us sync Back in the office, we've returned, and we've got our two notes. One of the note from the Android phone and one of the notes from the iPhone are now synced back in our, on our desktop version of Evernote. Do you see what we've just done? I mean, if you told me five years ago that I could do the process that I just walked through in a little live demo, I would have thought that you were crazy. I, would, I wouldn't have believed that the technology would be in place. We, first of all, curated and collected content from the web. We made, we made it context sensitive, we grabbed, grabbed graphics and we marked it up, we saved it into our Evernote account, meaning that we just added to the value of our digital inventory that we have. We have got more knowledge there now that I can recall any time I need it. Then I went to a meeting and I was able to share some of that valuable content. I was able to extend it out into my network with my, with my customers or with my coworkers, and I was able to share that information immediately. I didn't have to wait till I got back. I had instant access to my digital assets. Then I created some new digital assets while I was out and about, returned back to my office, and they followed me back into the office. That cycle, that little cycle that we've just done now, that alone makes Evernote probably the most powerful productivity tool that you can imagine. And it's worth spending time and embracing Evernote and getting comfortable with it just to do exactly what I just showed you. But of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as Evernote is concerned. We've just begun. So let's continue on. The next thing that I want to show you in Evernote is, uh, let me, I think I'm going to have to just, what am I going to do with my iPhone? i got to stop it sharing here just a minute because the iPhone is going to be problematic and it's going to want to stay on the very top. There we go. I'll leave the Android phone in the background in case I decide I need to return to Mr. Android. All right, sip, quick sip of water, just a minute. Ah. All right, now we're back in the office. Let's talk a little bit about the data structure in Evernote and how we organize our lives when we are in Evernote. So we've now figured out some ways, some of multiple ways of collecting information into Evernote. The next place that people tend to get stuck using Evernote is they want to create some elaborate data structure, some structure to their Evernote account that makes sense to them. Because most of us have an ex our experience with any organizational system on the computer is we have to set up a hierarchy. We have to set up what folders and what names and naming convention and all those sorts of things so that we can find information when we need. Now that harkens back to the days when we uh, had computers that had very poor search. Windows 95, earlier versions of the Mac. If we wanted to file things and store information on the computer, we had to create, we basically took the real world and recreated that in digital space. We took the concept of filing cabinets and rooms, and we had directories, and we had folders, and then we had nested folders within folders, and then we had files, and we had a naming convention, because how we found information in the past was using our eyes as our search engine. We would, we would visually browse through information and click and work our way through nested folders all the way down to find the document buried down inside of multiple levels often of folders that all makes sense as far as a hierarchical tree, but had to be designed. That is so difficult, and that is a dead stop for most people when they go into Evernote for a couple of reasons. First of all, Evernote's not designed that way. You can't set up multiple levels of hierarchy in Evernote. There's three levels. You've got stacks of notebooks, you've got notebooks, and you've got notes. That's it. You can't create notebooks within notebooks within notebooks. So you've got to come up with an entirely different understanding of how to find your information in Evernote. Fortunately, Evernote has incredibly powerful search technology built in. So nine times out of ten, when you're searching for something in Evernote, you're just going to click in the search field here, and you're going to type in search. The other time that you're going to find stuff through searching is you're going to search through your tags, but most of the time, you're just going to do a straight-up search. And Because Evernote categorizes everything as it comes in brilliantly. 
not only does it, of course, categorize and, and search on all of the text, but it goes through graphics over time, and it parses out all of the text that it can find in the graphics. So soon I'll actually be able to search on the text inside this note. It takes a little while for Evernote to resolve all of that information, but it works. I've got, you'll, you'll have wine labels that say wine on the label, and when you search for wine in your Evernote account, if you've taken pictures of multiple wine labels because you, you like having a good bottle of wine, those wine labels will start coming up when you search based on the word wine in the label. It's absolutely <laughs> incredible as you move ahead. So understanding that you don't need an elaborate organizational structure to your notebooks is really liberating for people beginning with Evernote because I just recommend you start with just a notebook, an inbox, and you don't worry about anything else to start. You can just start with a straight up inbox and then and because what would appear to be chaos to you if you're visually browsing for information, scrolling through your notebook really isn't chaotic at all because Evernote has everything indexed and if you just use search, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. So you can really remove some of that pressure of startup in Evernote by not worrying about setting things up right because you can come back later and you can start and you will start to add notebooks and you'll add tags and you'll add other things but Evernote works very well without adding any of those extra, uh, extra organizational layers just based on its own search criteria. Now, types of data within Evernote. We are just about, it's just about time for me to take a quick break. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into a note here. Where's the note that I got? There it is, types of data. Essentially, we have, uh, and, and types of notes that we have, is we can have images in our notes, such as the ones that we capture or captured from our digital camera. You can have text and PDFs in your, in your notes. You can have voice memos. And then your notes can also be categorized as reminders or lists. However, what Evernote does, the reason Evernote does that is they want to give us some extra level of control. Now, I should point out that Evernote is, uh, as I like to say, it's the jack of all trades and master of none. It's great for category, for pulling all of our information together, but if, say, we need a good to-do list manager, Evernote doesn't do a great job of being a top-end to-do list manager. It will do simple reminders, whereas I can take this note here and by clicking on the little reminder button here, I can turn it into a reminder and ask it, actually I'll clear the reminder from that because that's how, this is how it looks when it starts. You can add a reminder and add a date so that this message pops up at, on that day or at that time as a reminder, but it's not really designed to, to be a, a, a to-do list manager. Simple reminders you can add to tasks and to, to notes. You can also choose any list within Evernote and you can add checkboxes to it so that you can turn it into a list manager where you basically have lists and you can check off tasks as you get them done. Again, not designed to be interactive with, uh, with, with other people as far as tasks are concerned, but as a simple task manager, it does a really good job of, of setting up basic, simple lists. Uh, but for more advanced tasks, we look for how it integrates with other applications, which is what we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes. We're at the halfway point of the webinar now, so let me just jump back into the Hangout and stop sharing that screen before it drives you crazy. I'm going to turn off screen sharing. There we go. How's everybody doing? Are you there? Let me just take a look in the attendance and see how many people we have actually. We have 170 people in the room. That is awesome. And the chat seems to be going along, and I'm just having a quick check. And there's lots of conversation happening. I see Luke is interacting with people. Thank you very much for, for shepherding our chat room, Luke. So first thing I need to do is let's take a look at the poll results from earlier. So I'm going to polls. I just have to go there, and I have to make the poll result public and end the poll. So I asked you at the beginning. So 19% of you are raw beginners. 11% are lapsed users. 21% occasional, uh, 29 for some things, and 19% of you are heavy users. So that's good. I hope all of you are getting something out of what we're covering today. And the heavy users, if you're not getting something out of it, I hope you're giving something back by giving people advice in the chat room uh, and, and that you're interacting. So that is terrific. Next thing I wanted to do is actually ask you for a favor. Is I've got a... Uh, I'm going to put this in a, and pop this in right now. Um... Uh, this is the second delivery of this webinar that I'm actually delivering daily until Saturday. And I wonder if you could help me get the word out. If you're enjoying this, if you like my style of presentation and you're getting a lot of value out of this webinar, I'm going to ask you to click on, click on that, check it out, 
and you can tweet. It'll pre-put your account. It'll pre-populate your Twitter account with a suggested tweet that you can send out right away. And the quid pro quo here is please help me get the word out about this webinar to more people and you have a chance to win an Evernote Moleskine notebook. I'm going to choose, based on the hashtag, I'm going to choose one of the tweets that went out today and I am going to give you a free Evernote Moleskine notebook, which is just an awesome prize, I can promise you. So uh, if, you, if you'd be so kind as to help me get the word out about the webinar, that is, if you find it valuable. You can edit the post, uh, the tweet, all you want. Just make sure you leave that hashtag in that I've got in there, which says, I think, uh, Evernote Puzzle. Uh, make sure that that is uh, included there so that I can search so that I can find you if indeed you are the lucky person to win the Evernote Moleskine notebook. So that's kind of fun, and that helps me get more people in. We've got, we're just under 2,000 people total registered for this webinar, which is a record for me. So I'm hoping that you guys can help push me over the 2,000 mark. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, let me check my notes here because I've got paper notes and I've reached the break. Do the poll, do the click to tweet. Oh, a reminder about what's going to happen after the webinar. If you found that something's come up in life and you need to dart out and you need to jump off the webinar, uh, about two hours after the webinar is done, There'll be an email that will go out to you with all of the links that we talk about during the, this webinar and a replay link where you can go back and you can view the whole webinar in its entirety. So you'll have access to that. I ask you not to share that link with people. Instead, try and get them to sign up for the webinar. Uh, but if, uh, if you want to share it with somebody, I mean, I'm not, certainly not going to stop you. They, they'll be able to view the, the webinar link, uh, the, the video as well, because it's, uh, you can just, it's basically being stored on YouTube at that point there. But uh, go ahead and share it. Make sure that as many people learn about it as, as possible. All right. I think... I'm going to move on to the next section, which is pretty exciting. You can tell I get a little bit passionate about Evernote. It's, I guess it's because of when I started in the business. These tools, if you told me back when I did my TV show that I would have tools like this, that I would have access to tools like this, that I could do things like, I would have, I would have thought I'd died and gone to heaven because we dreamt of this kind of, a, this kind of a tool for so many years. And it just, for me, has become the heart of my entire productivity system. So now I'm going to jump back into the demo in just a few moments, and I'm going to talk to you about two as the last two pieces of the puzzle. I'm going to talk to you about integration and collaboration. Everybody out there seems to be interested in getting a piece of, inter of Evernote. They want to get on the Evernote bandwagon. And so what's happening is we're seeing integration, and Evernote's really open to this concept. So we're seeing, by the way, I can't, I thought I turned off the, 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 the blinking blink of every tweet that goes out, but I haven't obviously succeeded in doing that on my iPhone, so it's going to keep t t blinking that you guys are sending out tweets. So thank you for the tweets going out. Uh, you'll hear the beeping in the background. Hopefully it won't be too distracting. Back to integration. So all the major productivity companies and social networks are trying to find ways to make Evernote work for them because... It's all about the data. If the data is living in your in your Evernote account, it needs to it needs to be shared in other areas. It's going to be useful in other areas. Finding ways to link it to other areas without manually copying and pasting it across is really important. So we've seen some great examples in the last couple of months. One example, and, and you find videos on all these examples in my YouTube channel. So the first example, Post-it notes. You can use your Evernote camera now to take pictures of Post-it notes, and based on the color of the Post-it note, it will post it in one or another notebook. Simple, elegant, and right at the system level of Evernote. It does it right out of the box. Second integration is very cool and relevant to the Click to Tweet promotion is Evernote Moleskine Notebook has little stickers attached that you can stick. This is a Moleskine Notebook right here. You see it? And do I have my stickers in the back? I should have them in the back. Yes, they are. See, we've got all these little stickers here. This is great TV, eh? Uh, all these stickers, if I put those stickers on notes as I create them and then I take an image, I, I document capture the note, those stickers will tell Evernote what tags to attach and what notebooks to go in. It's absolutely brilliant. And then it OCRs my handwriting and it actually does a really good job of that. And I can go and find my notes by searching in Evernote rather than leafing through dozens of moldy old notebooks if they indeed get moldy, which I'm sure the Moleskine notebook would never get. Brilliant integration between Evernote and Moleskine. We just recently saw an announcement between Evernote and LinkedIn, where Evernote is uh, where you scan in your business card using the Evernote uh, camera, and Evernote creates an immediate link to your LinkedIn account, looks for the person, OCRs the card, looks for the person on LinkedIn, creates a, a friend request or a contact request uh, with LinkedIn, and basically puts you two together and populates all of the relevant information in your contact manager. How brilliant is that? Evernote and LinkedIn. Integration we're seeing all the way across the board. <clears throat> I want to show you 
another level of integration uh, right now, and that is integration with the task managers because so much of what we do in Evernote is related to projects that we're working on and tasks that we have to accomplish. Now, when I think about using Evernote, I'll just go back into screen sharing while I'm talking. When I think about using Evernote in meetings, uh, we all recognize right out of the gate just how valuable a, uh, a product it is or how valuable a tool it is for us as we are... Uh, as we're gathering notes in any meeting. So you're sitting there in a meeting and you're banging away in your Evernote account, but a lot of what you collect in a meeting is going to be task and to-do list items. Now we know we can create reminders in Evernote, but typically speaking what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take those tasks once the meeting is over and we're going to have to copy them into our task manager, whether we use Basecamp or Asana or whether we use Trello, all great tools, but that's where you want to manage the tasks because it's a, those are team tools where you can assign tasks to multiple people, you can check on progress. They're just way better for managing that sort of a, pro, a project. Todoist is another one. Remember the milk. There's a variety of them from the, from the simple all the way through to the very powerful and elegant. Well, a company called Task Clone has done an amazing job deciding to be a conduit between Evernote and your task app. So what Task Clone is, you can try it out for two weeks free and then it is a, a, a product that you'll have to buy if you're using it heavily. It's not very expensive, $15 a year for full functionality. But what it does is it allows you to, within your Evernote notes, create a demarcation that allows you to take that note and turn it into a task that is then sent across into your task manager. And I'm just going to walk you through it and show it to you because it is awesome. I love this integration. And I think if you see it happen in real time, you're going to be sold because it. Uh, I'm, there's no bells and whistles here. There's no magic. I'm just doing it. So let's go into this note here that I just showed you before the break. Remember how I made check marks on it? Task Clone will use those check marks to determine what should be tasks within Evernote. So when we put check marks in it, it then can find those and then say these are to be tasks. But it doesn't do it for all of your Evernote notes. You can determine it for just a single notebook or for all of your notes. But if you had all the checklists in your notes becoming tasks, you'd have, you wouldn't be able to use, uh, create checklists anymore in Evernote. So what we do is you highlight, oh sorry, you add, uh, add the check marks to whatever items have to become to-dos. So in this case here, these are my to-dos out of this, uh, once this webinar is over. I've got to remember to thank you people for tweeting out. I've got to remember to find the hashtag, the winner based on the hashtag, and I've got to remember to order that Moleskine notebook from Amazon and send it to the winner. Those are my tasks. How this works is I choose right here within my inbox, I choose, sorry, within my, uh, within my, um, within my tags, I choose a, a tag called to Asana. I created this tag. Remember how when I mentioned tags earlier, I told you that they can create outbound interactions for Evernote? This is the case that I was talking about. So what happens now is Task Clone will look in Evernote for anything that says to Asana. And when I sync this to the cloud, Asana has permission to stay in touch with my Evernote account. And you see how it's come back with a little TC here after it's synced? That's telling me that Task Clone has taken all of these tasks and theoretically forward them into my to-do list manager, which is Asana. So let's just go take a look. Here's my Asana account here. Let's open it up, and let's wait for it to wake up. And as soon as it syncs, yes, indeed, there the three tasks came through. And you see they have a little designation that say EN. It's, that's telling me that they've come from Evernote. So look at the integration that we just created. It's really awesome. We have taken a note in a meeting created a task or a to-do list item out of it. Now, we by just by demarking it as to Asana with a check mark, it's then migrated over into our team task manager. And here is the best part. Now that it's in my team task manager, I can assign these tasks to somebody else. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And I think I'll assign all of the tasks to somebody else except this one, which is remember to thank the attendees for tweeting. All of you that have been sending out tweets, my phone's been going a little bit crazy. Thank you so much for sharing information about the webinar. I'm glad that you feel strongly enough about the content that you're willing to share it. I appreciate that. And uh, a little bit later today, the winner will be notified that they have won, and uh, you'll have to send me your address so that I can fire you off the Evernote Moleskine notebook. This integration 
goes beyond just tasks. Now, uh, Task Clone will do this for over 40 different task managers. It also does it for Google Calendar. You can use the same techniques, but it put in the word schedule in to assign items in your calendar while you're making your notes in Evernote. It's really a cool level of integration. Uh, I've got a simple video on this on my YouTube channel so you can learn a little bit more and I'm going to be talking a little bit later on about the uh, course that I've developed. This is a there's a module that teaches all of how to do this in the course but this is such a cool implementation I wanted to make sure that I showed it to you. And that brings me to the last of the five pieces of the puzzle that I wanted to talk to you about today and that is sharing notes. Evernote allows us to take all of this information that we've collected and share it with others, as you've seen by me, what I was showing you with the smartphone, being able to share it right away with an individual in a meeting, sharing it with, uh, with our task managers and to-do lists. But we can also take this information and we can create real uh, um, network-wide sharing. So here's how it works. You can choose any note in your notebook at all. So let's go back to this note that we just created with the graphic. If you click in on the sharing, uh, which is this little arrow in our tools in the notes, you see that we have the option to copy the share URL, to post it, or to share the notebook. So there's two levels of sharing notes in Evernote. The first is available to everybody with a free account, and that's what I'm about to show you right now, which is to copy a share URL. So when I click on that, watch what happens. If you look in the center of the screen, it'll happen really quickly, but it creates a URL that it syncs to its cloud services and it copies that note onto my notebook or and sorry into my clipboard right away so what it's copied is a, it's also flipped a switch on this note to make it available to make it public so that other people can view that note now they're going to need the URL in order to view it but let's open a new browser window paste that URL in so this is a URL that you can share you can see it's a it's a hellaciously long URL but I can Tweet that out. Of course, I would shorten it. Of course, I can post it to Facebook. I can do. I can put it in my blog. I can send it by email. And anybody who opens this URL will be brought into this page here. They'll be brought into their browser, and in their browser window, a shared note in Evernote from my account will open with all links active and everything available to us. Isn't that sweet? That is just amazing. So. If we go back and we look at that share option that we had, we can also post these to social media. So this allows us to take documents like this that we've created, infographics, anything like this that we want to share, and it allows us to basically share them as if, as if we had our own web service. It's because now I, I don't need to host, uh, create a blog post or host this on a website in order to share any of this information, even long documents. I do this with my newsletter. I take my weekly newsletter and I tweet it out to my Twitter community and they click on the link and it opens a shared note so they can view my newsletter rather than e for people that are not on my email list. It is so cool how we can apply these shared notes. And I'll be talking more about the individual shared notes in a moment. But if you want to get into the deep end of the pool, if you want to add collaboration to sharing, then you can also share the entire notebook. This is only available to the Evernote Premium users. So this is, uh, if you're spending $45 a year to buy the Evernote Premium version, you then have the ability to take your whole notebook. And this is different than people just viewing. The, with the shared links of the notes that we just showed, people can only view that. They can't edit it. And uh, uh, they can edit it once they've saved it in their own notebook. But there's no two-way link between that note and the originating note. If you update the note, they have to refresh it. It won't automatically refresh in their Evernote notebook. A shared notebook, however, is a dynamic document. Anybody who you share it with, if they make changes in the notes, those notes appear immediately in your Evernote account and in their Evernote account. So you have a collaborative and a dynamic document. So if you're working on projects together, this is the tool that really opens a whole new level of interaction using Evernote. So let's think about the process that we've just walked through, these kind of these five steps. From collecting information at the very beginning, uh, just through a web browser, through a simple web browser or with our smartphone, to be able to access it anywhere, anytime that we need that access to that information, then sharing it with individuals within our work group, uh, being able to then take that same information and share it now not only with our individuals as we did in the meeting, but now sharing it with entire networks, with our Twitter channel, with our Facebook channel, with our YouTube channel. We can start to share 
the information that we've collected, the valuable data that we've collected, we can start to share it with entire networks all through Evernote. And it's all about collecting that data first and building some value in the amount of inventory that we have of little snippets of data that we know are there and that we can recall. It makes us better. It's, it's an awesome, awesome tool. So I'm going to jump out of this right now. Actually, I'm not going to jump out. I'm going to stay in it because I'm going to ask you what's next. I actually have a course that I've developed that I'm going to tell you about right now. We have 10 minutes to go in the webinar, so I want to get through this in about five or six minutes and still have some time to answer questions. So the next thing, as far as I'm concerned, for you is I want you to consider this course that I have just been working my tail off to develop. It's called Evernote Made Easy and it's a 10-part course. And in this course, I basically download everything I know about Evernote into these 10 modules so that you there are basically no secrets. You take that knowledge, and then you build your own system out of that knowledge. Now, I do refer to some people who have got some fairly rigid structure, some uh, ways that you can structure Evernote if you want to copy other people's models. But for the most part, I think most of us want to take Evernote, learn to use it, and then implement it in our own lives and make it fit with us. Uh, the, it's <laughs> so cool. I'm really proud of this. I deliver it as shared notes in Evernote. I actually pioneered this idea with a 40-part course on growing your YouTube channel that I just finished delivering at the beginning of this month. So I had my students there. Every day I would send them an email with an, a shared Evernote note, which would have all of the course content in the video for that day embedded in the note. At the end of the course, they had then collected and they had an entire textbook, basically, of all of my notes from the from each module of the course so that they could refer to it at any point. But here's the magic. Not only are they getting in the Evernote habit themselves and they're using Evernote every day and they've got this textbook that they've built the day by day as new information has come in, but if I ever update any of the information, which I do regularly, and certainly with this Evernote course, I'm going to be updating it a lot as changes come in Evernote. And as we go through the first cycle of people taking the course, I'm going to be taking feedback and I'm going to be adding new content very quickly to it they can just refresh the notes and get free updates for the life of the product. All they have to do is refresh the note and you get the latest version of the note in your notebook so you're always up to date. It's kind of a lifetime subscription to, to the course. I'm, I'm really proud of how this has come together because it's an elegant implementation of Evernote. Bottom line is it's going to help you master Evernote because you're going to start your day out learning a little bit about Evernote in Evernote and it's going to start getting you into that Evernote habit. The end of the day, it takes us about, the experts say, 30 days, 40 days to develop any positive habit, to make it, to entrench it in our lives. Evernote is a positive habit. Saving things to Evernote, learning to look to Evernote are things that are going to work for you. So this model gets you thinking about using Evernote every single day, and here's the offer I'm going to make with it. I'm going to ask you to spend a month with Evernote before you decide whether Evernote is for you. If after going through the course content, using Evernote for a month, it's not for you, that's a month well spent because you're never gonna you're gonna have to find a different system for Evernote. But I don't think you should spend money, so I'm gonna refund your money from this course if indeed Evernote doesn't work for you. But I don't think I'm gonna be refunding too many uh, too many fees because Evernote is such an awesome tool. You will find a way to make it work for you if you give it that chance. If you dedicate to that 30 days, so we're gonna give you a great kickstart because for the first 10 days you're gonna be getting some really compelling content and ideas about new ways to use Evernote and ways to implement it. So by the end of the 10 days, you're going to be pretty much an Evernote ninja technology-wise, and then it's all about developing process and developing the different habits in Evernote. Who is it for? Well, if you're any of the people that I talked about earlier, if you click on a web page and then email it to yourself, if you've done that in the last month, you need Evernote, you need my course. If you're the sort of person that just clips information from all sorts of sources and then and then and and, uh, and stores it in a variety of places, multiple pieces of paper. If you're always looking for lost things on your computer, if you spent more than 20 minutes searching for something on your computer in the last two weeks, you need this course. And if you're always saying to others, oh, it's on my computer, it's on my other system, I'll get it to you, you need this course. And certainly, if you file everything in email, you get on this course right away because it is for you. I actually include in this course links to my three steps to inbox zero, which will help you overcome that bad email habit as well. But I digress. How much? Okay. Oh, I'll get to how much in a minute. I've got one more slide. Evernote is a tool that makes us better. I'm excited about this course because I don't want to be too modeling. 
But Evernote has the potential to improve your performance and improve your life as a result. You're more capable. You're more organized. Things are more at the tip of your fingertips because you know how to get access to the information that you want when you need it. And the end of the day, you're less stressed. We reduce the amount of stress because you, you're not worried that you've lost something or you have to find something. You don't go through that panic process of searching everywhere for something that you need for somebody important. You know where to look, and Evernote doesn't disappoint. So the course itself, 10 modules. I send it in 10 days. You can take it in longer than 10 days, but every module comes once a day. Uh, it's about 30 minutes. The longest one is just about an hour of content. Right now, there are 50 videos in it, but as I say, uh, by the time you've been through one cycle, uh, by the time you're through your 10 days, you're probably going to return to a couple of the lessons because I'll have added content based on feedback right away. It'll be a, it'll, for the first uh, 20 or 30 days that this course is being offered. I imagine I'm going to be adding new content as people make suggestions and give me feedback. I'm looking forward to to evolving it with these first cohorts that go through. You also get access to a Facebook group, which is going to be the ideal place to post technical questions and challenges and ideas. I will moderate that group and answer questions. You also have direct email access to me for questions, but for the most part, I want people to ask questions on Facebook so everybody can benefit from the answers. There's a 30-day guarantee with unlimited updates, and it's all for $97. I'm not offering any extra bonuses or anything special, or you have to buy it right away or the price is going to go up. This is uh, going to be my flagship product moving ahead. I'm going to be selling this for quite some time at $97. It's great value, I believe, uh, w especially with the, the, the guarantee. And the bonus, really, is if you follow it through for 30 days, I've made you a better performer by the end of the 30 days. You're way ahead of the game. You're going to be getting more done. Ultimately, you're probably going to be making more money. I can't guarantee that, but I imagine you're going to be making more money and you're going to be less stressed, which is really the biggest deal of all. Let me jump back into the Hangout now. That is the offer. I've got to post that to you. I've got to let you know where to go for that. So where you go is, let me just remove this offer and add this. There it is. So this is where you go is you click on the Show Me More, and that's the link that will give you more information about the course. There'll be a description of the uh, the copy, uh, the uh, the syllabus of the course will be there. It will all be included in that link, as well as the opportunity to be able to purchase it right there, uh, and all of the process for signing up. But uh, extra information is available there. As I say, this is going to be my flagship course. I've built, I've worked hard at developing it. I've uh, worked with a lot of Evernote experts and and gotten feedback from a lot of great people. On this product, uh, and I think it's gonna—I think it's gonna change a lot of people's lives. So I'm proud of it, and I'm excited about it. I'm just gonna jump into the chat room because some people I know in the first webinar were unable to see that link for some reason. So in the chat right now, I'm posting the link as well in case anybody needs access to it. So that is the official part of the webinar, and I'm three minutes from the end of the first hour. I'm gonna answer a few questions right now. I'll keep this webinar open beyond the top of the hour. If you have to leave, by all means, get on with your day. Uh, but if I'm going to try and answer a few questions here, I'll go into chat for a while. I'll answer as many questions as I can over the next little while, and then I will send, um, and then I will, uh, you will get receive the email with a summary and all of the with the video uh, at the end of at the end of today. Holy cow! I need a drink. I've been talking solid for an hour. I know you're all tired too. You've been listening to me solid for an hour. Yumpin' yiminy. Okay, questions. Let's take a look. Would the trick of using a shared note work well with MailChimp or not? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, when I send you these, uh, uh, if you sign up for the course, that trick of shared notes, I'm going to be using AWeber, which is very similar to MailChimp. Actually, if I started over again, I'd probably choose MailChimp to begin with. Uh, but I'm going to be using uh, an email autoresponder to send out all of the notes. So absolutely it works. That's a question from Steve D. Okay, let's look through for some other questions. Post your questions now. Post your questions now. A plug Patreon. Joyce is telling me to plug Patreon. Joyce, are you one of my Patreon supporters? I'm not going to plug Patreon, and I'm going to tell you why. Patreon is crowdfunding, where people who follow my YouTube channel come and they add extra financial support to the Dotto Tech brand by committing a certain amount of money every month to me. 
and it's great. It's it's wonderful to have that community adding support to my YouTube channel. If you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to YouTube, search for Dotto Tech, and sign up because I'm releasing new videos each and every day. I encourage you to do that. But I'm selling a course today, so I'm not going to ask you for money through Patreon at the same time. <laughs> Although it would be great if anybody decides to do that, I'm not going to plug it. Although I guess I just kind of did plug it. Thank you, Joyce. All right. Steve says, and this wasn't me posting it, by the way. This, Steve, I really like your presentation style. You'll be signing up for your course. Thank you, Steve. Good, good on you. I'm glad. Your wife is considering using Webinar Jam software. Do I recommend it? Oh, good question. So I'm delivering this webinar to you today through Webinar Jam. From my perspective, I've been using Webinar Jam for quite some time. There's actually an affiliate link here, so if you, your wife does buy it, I can make some money if she clicks on the affiliate link. There I am selling again. But I think it's a pretty darn good application. It's using Google Plus Hangouts, which I think is the way to go as far as the future of webinars. It's got some warts. The odd person gets kicked off the webinar and doesn't doesn't stay with us, and that's really the, uh, the nature of Google Plus. But for this kind of a webinar that I've just delivered today, it's absolutely awesome. The registration system works great. It supports, although not to the level I'd like, a technology a, a version of delivering webinars that I call hybrid webinars, where I actually insert video. But overall, for the most part, I would say yes. If she wants more feedback, send an email to info at dottotech.com, and she can. I'll jump on Skype with her if she's going to be jumping into the webinar world, and I'm happy to spend a few minutes talking with her. Actually, the next series of webinars that I'm planning on after I've finished with this Evernote cycle is going to be one on delivering webinars because I've been doing so much research on it and it's such an empowering way to communicate. This webinar here that we've launched, uh, we've got something like over, two th well, we're going to be approaching 2,000 people registered by the end of today. Uh, that's a great way to reach out to a community and to support them and to give them, uh, to give them opportunities to learn about you, to learn you to learn about them. It's, it's webinars I, I'm a big fan of. There are a lot of work though and you've got to the problem with products like Webinar Jam is they're so accessible that sometimes people don't take the whole process seriously enough getting into it. So you got to make sure you do all of your, your stuff correct in, in the back end. But if you do, it is a great tool. Let me take a look. Oh, we are at 201. So I'm going to officially say that's a wrap for this webinar. I'm going to still be around for the next little while answering questions so you don't have to jump off. But if you need to leave now, now is the time to leave. You've given me the hour. I hope that I've delivered the promised level of information and the density that you now understand the world of Evernote far better than when you began. If you are interested in the course, if you need the course, take a look. If you don't like my style, if you've learned more but you don't think that my style of teaching is going to be great for you, then I encourage you to visit lynda.com. They've got some great Evernote tutorials there, a little more structured, a little less um, they're probably uh, a little more reverent than I am as, as they go through the content. Uh, that's another option. If you like my style, sign up for my course. Uh, you will receive three emails over the next week following up from this. If you want to receive more email from me beyond that, make sure you sign up for my newsletter And if you're not on my newsletter list. Finally, thank you so much for spending the hour with me. I hope that you've learned. And uh, until next time, have fun storming the castle. And for everybody else, we're still here, and I am looking at your questions now. Give me a second to read, and I will try and answer. <clears throat> so, security in Evernote. Andrew, good question. Any issues putting personal information into Evernote? I love this question, Andrew, because it is so relevant. We can create, you don't have to have all of your notebooks synced to the cloud service on Evernote. You can create something called offline notebooks on your main account that allow you to just store information. So for instance, if you've got personal tax information, personal information, uh, you know, any of that sort of stuff, medical information, don't sync them to the cloud because it's far less secure. Just keep them in your own personal notebook. Now, you don't have access to them everywhere you are, but you still have access to them within Evernote. Once you sync it to the cloud, all bets are off. I like to say this. Here's my, here's my mantra around Web 2.0 security, cloud-based security. The Internet is 100% secure for anything which does not need to be secure. That helps, doesn't it? But it really does. If, you, if it's something that you go, hmm, I'm not sure, then don't share it. Then don't post it to Evernote in the cloud. Make sure you store it in a secure notebook. Things like passwords should never be stored in Evernote. But uh, other information like uh, medical records, uh, tax records, fine to store those in Evernote, but keep them in private notebooks. Don't sync them to the cloud. I hope that is an answer. 
how fast with the training and how to deliver webinars. <laughs> I'm a lifelong user of a member of webinar job and still having the time to figure it all out. Um, it won't be till mid-October uh, because September is going to be spent launching this course, supporting this course, reworking any new content that I have to do for this Evernote course. Uh, because uh, the 10 modules are complete, but I'm really looking forward to the feedback, and I know I'm going to be rebuilding those modules as we go along. The first two weeks of October, I'm going fishing. Steve deserves a fishing trip, and then I'll get on to the, to the webinar jam one. Uh, if you've got some questions about it, uh, you can send, you can drop me an email. Drop it to info at .otech.com. I'm always interested to talk to other people about how they're using it and to give you whatever advice I can. Uh, it helps me as I'm preparing for the webinar, knowing exactly what, what people are, are going through. And... If it helps, there's a webinar, if you go to my site, there's a webinar on how I produce my screencasts, which gives you a little lot of information that you can use to help prepare for your own webinars. A lot of that information crosses over. So, But this webinar is about Evernote. It's not about screencasting and webcasting. Okay, scanning documents. Do I teach how to the paperless office? Yes, indeed, we do cover that. In fact, I don't cover that by myself. I've brought in the best person on the planet to help me out with that particular module, and that's Brooks Duncan. He knows the paperless office like nobody's business, and so we do talk about the paperless office in the course, talking about what scanners to use, how to implement them, what the best process is, and Brooks walks you through the whole concept of the paperless office. It's module eight, I believe, in the course. Did you say your YouTube channel? You have video how to capture business cards in Evernote and LinkedIn? Yes. Paul is asking if on my YouTube channel I have a video on how to capture business cards on the Evernote using the Evernote app and capture them to LinkedIn. I do. I think it's only for the iPhone at this point here. It isn't, doesn't work in Android, but if you go to the, my YouTube channel, uh, you will be able to view that video, which walks you through. It's a simple sort of tutorial. For a Google guy pushing towards getting things done, why Evernote over Google Drive? Well, Evernote is, uh, uh, this is a question from Andrew. Google Drive is is a great great tool uh, for for sharing for storing information online, but it doesn't have the elegance and the integration of Evernote and the multi points of access. The Evernote apps that we have on our smartphone, in my mind, set it apart from everything that we can do in Google Drive. The ability in the Android phone, there's a beautiful little widget that allows you to quickly capture information. Uh, the way that the camera works in Evernote, going from document camera to post-it note camera to uh, the Evernote, uh, the Moleskine notebook, though all of those things set it apart from Google Drive. OCRing your notes as you take the pictures, as, as images are being brought in and graphics are being brought in. That sets it apart from Google Drive. There's lots of reasons that Evernote works. I still use Google Drive. It's still a tool that works for me. I use, uh, I use the Evernote suite. I use the Google suite of tools for word processing. The presentation that I get, the slideshow, the brilliant slideshow that I use today, Google Drive. Uh, but Evernote does way, way more. I hope I covered that. Joyce loves the business card feature. Indeed, it does. Any chance for student discount for the course? Hmm, Jacqueline has asked. I should try and implement that. Jacqueline, send me an email to info at .otech.com. I'll type that in. And ask me that question again. Remind me of it. So once I've decompressed from doing this webinar, let me put my head around it and see if I can come up with something. I think that's a great idea. I'd love to, to, to allow for a student discount. Tell me what you think would be a fair price for students, and I'll try and figure out a way to create some sort of a code for students to be able to access it. It's a, that's, a, that's a super idea. Thanks for the suggestion. All right. Grant is asking, what about audio and video files in Evernote? Can those be clipped and accessed? Audio files can be stored in the Evernote, and you've got the audio file there. Video files aren't brought native into Evernote. Instead, what you have to do is you have to create a link to another video service, such as Vimeo or YouTube. But the audio files, when you're taking audio notes, although it's not something that I do very often, you actually have the audio note there in the Evernote note, so you can play it back and that sort of stuff within the note structure itself. Um, personally, I prefer doing that dictation. I prefer taking anything that I'm going to capture my audio and converting it to dictation. But then I'm not recording music and stuff like that. It's always voice. All right. Let me take a look and see how many other questions. How many people are still left in the room? Just a quick boo. Still got 111 of you there. Awesome. Has it been valuable? Good. I put so much work into this thing. Holy. And you're doing these demos live. You're always anxious. This morning when I delivered it the first time, Siri cacked on me. It didn't work. So when I was doing the dictation part, 
crickets. It didn't work at all, so I had to, I had to recover from that. All right. So okay. So it looks like uh, Steve. Good question. Would you, the Google Drive never? I'm a heavy struggle to decide where to store information. Yeah. Steve, uh, Steve's talking about how he struggles determining whether to store information in Google Drive or Evernote, and that is a. How would I give you advice on that? Um, hmm. I got to think about that. That's that. That actually might make a really good post. Determining it's it's the, people have the same question around Dropbox, and a lot of people have. They say, well, how's Evernote different from Dropbox? I mean, it's profoundly different because of all of the extra integration. But for things like just quickly sharing a file for posting, a, having a document that's shared with others as opposed to collaborative, you know, Google Drive and Dropbox uh, are pretty compelling products. So, uh, yeah, something I'm going to, I think you're going to have to develop your own system. I'm going to give some thought to that. I don't want to answer it because I think I'd be just, I'd just be rambling right now. Do you share my, how did I share my phones early in this presentation, Steve's asking? Pretty cool, eh? Okay. Should I, should I reveal my trade secrets? Seriously? Should I reveal my trade secrets? Okay, I will. Uh, on the iPhone, I use a program called Reflector, and then that brings up a, it allows me to use AirPlay to sync the iPhone. On the Android phone, I've just figured it out. <laughs> it took me two years to figure out how to share an Android phone, and it's called SideSync. It's using, it, you've got to use Samsung product, uh, but I was able to make it work on a Mac, which is where the magic comes in. So I'm using a product called SideSync. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> as far as I know, you cannot clip directly from iOS devices. There are some add-ons that were... Oh, so it's SJ is answering somebody else's question. Do you have a good source for formatting newsletters in Evernote? Uh, I talk about formatting in the course a little bit, and so you can do basic text formatting in Evernote. Um, you know, it's bolding. You can add links. You can do that sort of stuff. You can, of course, embed graphics, but it's very linear. You don't have a lot of page layout. You can put tables in. Uh, so you've got an ability to be able to do that, but you don't have full-on, you know, word processing, full-on layout capabilities. Uh, but you've got some modest ones, and I imagine that's something that Evernote is going to increase because in the premium version, you can take your notes and you can go into something called presentation mode, which allows you to do presentations from Evernote. Not the far even more limited than what we get in, say, Google Drive, but it shows us that they're thinking about that as one of the next levels of integrate or uh, features that they'll be adding to Evernote. I'm not speaking for the folks at Evernote. Heck, they never speak to me. I can never hear. I can never seem to get in touch with them. But I would imagine that would be a feature that they would be thinking about adding at some point. Okay, a Dropbox for big files. Joyce, you're absolutely right about that. Joyce is saying that you should be using these cloud services for big files, for large files that you're storing and sharing. Dropbox works for those sorts of things, and absolutely, that's bang on as far as that. Alan, can't understand what I said on how I share my Samsung phone. Okay. Side Sync, S-I-D-E-S-Y-N-C. It's an app that runs on the Android phone, I think only on the Samsung. I'm using a Galaxy S4 right here. Bink, Galaxy X4. I'm actually using a USB tether, a USB cable to tether it to the computer, and then I downloaded an app called SideSync 3.0, and that then creates the connection for the for the Android phone. The difference with the iOS is once I use the iOS device, I can actually use the iOS phone as a phone, and it reflects. Uh, you see through reflector the iOS screen on the on the Mac. With SideSync, you end up having to use the mouse to control the phone, so it takes a little bit of practice. It's actually a bit of a challenge to put the presentation or to put the uh, demo together. Yolanda, good presentation, or oh, great actually, great presentation. I have such a great personality. I like you, Yolanda. Yolanda, you keep it moving right along. Interesting, good. Thank you. I appreciate the kind comments. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad when people find these webinars to be engaging, but I hope mostly that they're valuable. I hope that you've learned a lot from it, and then it's opened your eyes to ways to become more productive. Uh, it's, uh, so I, I appreciate the kind comments. Chris, can't think of anything to ask. So uh, do you have a question that you're hoping to get that hasn't been asked yet? I, I actually can't think of anything. I'm starting to feel <laughs> the brain overwhelmed. Good webinar. Looking forward to it. Mike. Okay. So we're uh, you know about 15 minutes in. Here is 
since I don't see any new questions coming, here is the process that will happen now. I'm going to leave the chat room open for a few minutes while I kind of clean things up on my side. I need to thank Luke for moderating the chat room while we were on. I, what, I, what I will do is I will copy uh, the entire chat record and I will read through it to see what people have to say to see if there are areas that I can improve. One last uh, pitch, if, you, if you're on the fence about taking the course, sign up for it. With the 30-day money-back guarantee, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, as valuable to me are people that are going to be saying it doesn't work for them as it does, especially in these early stages, because I want to make sure that this course is as valuable as possible. So I'm really looking forward to the first groups of people going through the course. And you guys are the second, you're the, you're the second group to, to have exposure to the for me to launch it uh, too. So thank you very much for, for trusting me with your time, as I said, and sharing your afternoon, evening, or whatever time it happens to be where you are with me. So I'm going to shut down the video feed. Uh, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter and you want to get the regular Dottotech newsletter because you want more of these webinars, go to dottotech.com and sign up for the newsletter there for more information about the webinars. I'm seeing lots of thanks and, and, and kudos to Luke as well. So thanks again to Luke. And uh, so I'm going to shut off the video portion, be around a little bit in chat. Uh, but until next time, have fun storming the castle. <laughs>